is the king's power to grant a pardon personal and absolute? Some say that the power of the king to grant a royal pardon is absolute and that no one can question it. Is this correct? In my opinion, the answer is a no. First, let us look at some fundamental principle of law. What is meant by the king's discretion? It means that sometimes the federal constitution gives the king a greater freedom to decide certain issues. Thus, does the king have any absolute power over the question of pardons? To understand how the constitution treats this concept, we need to recall some basic principles of the rule of law and constitutional law. The first thing that you have to remember is about 800 years ago, a famous jurist de Bracton established a well-accepted principle that no one is above the law, not even his majesty the king. Second, as constitutional monarch, the king must act in accordance with Malaysia's laws and constitution and he must uphold the rule of law and order in the country. Third, the king cannot act on his own. That is why the king has several persons who advise him. One is the cabinet. Who is the cabinet? Someone you elected through parliament. So, is the king obliged to comply with their advice? Mostly yes. But in four situations, the king can act in his own discretion. Now, the king may act in his own discretion with greater freedom a in the appointment of a prime minister after election for example in refusing to dissolve parliament so that elections can be held or three in requiring a meeting of the conference of rulers over powers of their respective royal houses and finally in any other case mentioned in the constitution what does any other case involved. In short, those powers do not concern the powers of pardon. In my blog called Paradox, I have cited examples of those four situations. How and who appoints the pardons board? That's the next question, isn't it? Well, the king appoints members of the Federal Territory Pardons Board. The respective state rulers or the governors, as the case may be, appoint the pardons board of their individual states. The king presides over the Federal Territory Pardons Board, which comprises five other persons. The Attorney General, the Minister for Federal Territories, and three other members appointed by His Majesty the King. So, all in six. Where does the king's power to pardon come from? It's in Article 42, Clauses 1 and 9. How does the king exercise his majesty's powers when granting pardons? Well, rather cryptically, the constitution states that the pardons board must meet in the presence of the king and the king shall preside over it. Because of the phrase, the king presides over the pardons board, does it mean that the king has overriding power over the entire board? No, in my view, Clause 8 and 9 of Article 42 set out a framework and formula how the board must act. Article 42 Clause 8 has an operational clause. Ask yourself this question, does the board advise the king? Of course it does. Article 42 Clause 8 states, the pardons board must tender its advice. Now before that, look at what Article 42 Clause 9 says. It involves a very important personage. Before tendering their advice on any matter, a pardons board shall consider any written opinion with the Attorney General which the Attorney General may have delivered thereon. So, no choice there. The board must hear the AG out. Next, so the advice is a two-step process. First, the AG must render his opinion to the board. After that, the board takes its next step. Clause 9 of Article 42 states that the board, having considered the AG's opinion, needs to tender their advice. Tender their advice to whom? Obviously, the king. 
Can the king ignore such advice? No. Why? Because of a clause inserted by Tun Mahade. Before 1994, Malaysian courts had consistently ruled that the king's discretion on the granting of pardons was absolute. That would change after the 1994 constitutional reform. Article 40 Clause 1 had, from the beginning, stipulated that the king must comply with the cabinet's advice. If the cabinet advised the king to decide in a certain way, the king had no choice. He had to comply. That clause need not have been there in the first place. The compliance principle has been well accepted for almost 800 years all across common law jurisdictions. The convention required the monarch's compliance with those authorized to advise the monarch. But Malaysia put it in expressly anyway, just to ensure no one forgot or misunderstood. Now on the 24th of June 1994, Tun Mahade diluted the king's power. He went even further. He inserted an additional clause 1 capital A into Article 40. Clause 1 capital A has been sitting in the constitution for 30 years. It is the most crucial clause on the question of the king's power over a petition for a pardon. What does it say? It makes a sweeping statement. Clause 1A in Article 40 stipulates that in the exercise of his functions under this constitution, where the king is to act in accordance with advice, on advice or after considering advice, the king shall accept and act in accordance with such advice. Crystal clear. If the pardons board advises the king to treat a petition of mercy or clemency in a certain way, the king must comply with the pardons board's advice. His majesty, with respect, has no choice. So, how did the Malaysian courts treat this subject and this amendment? They skirted it. Post-1994 Malaysian cases persist in the old view that the king's discretion is absolute, even when other Commonwealth jurisdictions, including Britain, have gone away from it. In one 2020 High Court case, Justice Atta Tahe ruled that the king must accept and act on the advice of the pardons board. His reasoning consistent with Clause A. Yet on appeal, the federal court overturned Justice Akta's ruling. It ruled that the king's exercise of the power of pardon is absolute and non-justiciable, meaning the courts cannot question it. This is rather confusing and at odds with other leading Commonwealth cases. So there is a conflict between what the Constitution states and how our courts have ruled on that point. In my view, when there's a conflict between what the courts say and the clear, unambiguous and express words of the Constitution, the words of the Constitution must prevail. Article 4, Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution states, the Constitution is a supreme law and any law passed after Merdeka inconsistent with this Constitution shall, to that extent, be void. Article 40, Clause 1A of the Constitution clearly states that the King must act in accordance with advice or after considering advice with the greatest deference. In my opinion, the King does not have the power to grant any pardon on terms different from those advised by the Pardons Board. There is now a question that bothers a great many people in this country. It's this. What did the Pardons Board advise the King? Is the proceedings of the Pardons Board a secret? For that, you have to wait for the next video. Goodbye.